So today I have the Red Tiger dash cam. I reviewed another dash cam recently that wasn't very good, so I decided to go with a bigger upgrade this time. So this one has two separate cameras. You've got the front one and you got the rear one. The rear one has a 20 foot wire, so it will reach just about every vehicle. As for the camera, it has a Sony IMX 415 sensor, which does 4K up to 60 frames per second. We got our little mount here, which you'll stick that to the dash. Here's our rear camera. It's got a nice long cord. And we also have a 3M sticky tape. We got a couple screws, so you can either mount it with a 3M or you can screw it into your vehicle. I am going to use the 3M sticky myself, but I don't want to drill any holes in my car. But it's got a swivel, so you can kind of move it around. I've seen people put these on the inside, on the outside. I'm going to be putting mine on the outside once I figure out how I'm going to wire it through. And then we have our cigarette lighter adapter here. So if you do want it to be on all the time or, you know, for certain scissors and stuff, you will have to get the hard wire kit. It only includes the cigarette lighter charger here, which that's what I'm going to be using for now. And then we'll take a look at the camera itself, the main unit. So this is your front facing one. And it looks like we got our manual underneath everything. And what's also cool is that there is an app for this. You can turn your camera into a Wi-Fi, send off a Wi-Fi signal, connect your phone to it, and you can download files straight from it into your car while you're on the road. Let's say you just got an accident, you want to get it into your phone right away so you got it saved, proof, send it off, whatever it might be. At the top, we got our connections. We got the micro USB for powering it, and we have our adapter for our rear camera. On the side here, we have our micro SD card, which this one handles up to 256 gigabytes. It is one of the highest capacities of the dash cams that I've seen. I think I've seen a couple that are in the 512 range, but they are far more exper or expensive too. Let's go ahead and I'll grab some stuff. We're going to power this on. We're going to check it out and then we'll go get it all installed and take it on the road. All right, so I'm getting it all connected up with my power station with a DC inverter. I'm going to put a 64 gig Samsung Extreme card in here for now. I have to invest in a larger one eventually, but for now, that's the one I'm going to use. We'll go ahead and get this powered on. I've got to turn on the power station. There it goes. So as soon as the cord got some power, it started booting up right away. And then we need to format the card. It is not touchscreen. I have a habit of always touching the screen on every device I get. It looks like we got quite a few settings in here to deal with. We got Wi-Fi. We got language, date, time, parking. The parking mode, I know you have to hardwire it for that one. So I won't be able to demonstrate that until I can get a hardwire later. So we go through. Oh, I like I said, I got the habit of trying to click on it. All right, so we got some recording going. It shows a uh, GPS location, and it also has the uh, date, time, all that stuff. And it will tell you your speed as well. Uh, I think you could turn it off. I got to check. But we could go into our different modes. And the front camera, like I said, will go up to 4K 60 FPS. And the rear camera is only up to 1080p. But 1080p should still be pretty good as long as it's got a good sensor and everything, which it does. It has that Sony in there. Or, well, I know it has a Sony in the front one. I'm assuming it's got a Sony on the rear, too. Let's see what else we got in here. So we can get a QR code where you can download the app. You just need to point your camera at it. Well, I can't even talk. Point your camera at it, and then it will be able to download the app for you. Once you have the app all set up and connected through the Wi-Fi and everything, you'll be able to see the camera live on your phone as well at the same time. And you'll be able to take pictures, record video, 
and everything's just right there off of your phone which is really cool and then you can always go in and you can download files that are on the camera itself once you want to do that so there's a lot of functionality when it comes to this camera so for the rear camera i got it mounted right on my lift gate and i had to remove some panels and kind of run the wires and i also had to remove my spoiler hopefully your vehicle will be a little bit easier it wasn't a hard job but it was just a pain to get into some of this and i'm going to run it through to the front all right so i got everything back together i ran it all the way through to the front underneath all the liner and there was still about three to four feet of wire left and here i got the camera mounted you can adjust it up and down uh, so there's plenty of length there for probably most vehicles out there this is a larger suv and it fits perfectly fine and it would probably still work for like an excursion or something like that i can't guarantee it and then i got wired up here in the front and i did the same thing with the power cable once it's powered on it's going to show you both cameras default you press the button there on the left it's going to switch between you could do just reverse or rear just front or you can show both of them or you can completely turn it off or you don't have to stare at it while you're going down the road so that's pretty cool i like that you have all those different views here's one quick sample test picture quality looks amazing on here you can see the date the time you can see how fast i'm going you can see the uh, you know the coordinates for gps if you happen to need that so really nice picture here I'll take a look at the rear camera. We can see the car that we just passed. We're going to see the boat and vehicle here on the left. So even the rear camera, even though it's only 1080p and everything, the picture quality is very clear. And I mean, I can see everything behind my vehicle, so it definitely does an outstanding job in picture quality. I was able to capture some amazing views. Uh, I went on a trip for my birthday and it was a pretty long drive i had a few close calls from other vehicles a lot of perfect scenery and yeah if i could just get rid of the glare on my windshield with a dash mat or something this would be some really nice video if you're looking for a really good dash cam though i would say that this one works very well so far this is my favorite one i've ever used we have 4k in the front 1080p in the rear we have date stamp time stamp the miles per hour you're going, the uh, coordinates for GPS. I mean, this dash cam does just about all of it. It ticks a lot of the boxes, and it's not quite the price tag as some of those others that do have all those options. So, I mean, if you're looking for something, this is definitely it. Oh, and as a final amount of information, just to give you an idea when it comes to the storage space, 64 gigabyte card in here, a uh, few hour drive, recording both front and rear i ended up using i want to say it was about 49 gigabytes when i got to my destination and that's recording two separate videos so it records two separate videos on whatever time lapse you want two, uh, two minutes three minutes whatever it is i do a three minute uh, loops but uh, overall this is an amazing dash cam i'm pretty happy with it and i definitely can recommend this one